Hi friends, it's Deanna here today and today we're going to be working on the picnic blanket. This is a super simple pattern. It's a free pattern so it's awesome and I love this for like when you're going to take picnics, when you're going anywhere and you want a blanket to put on the ground. This is the perfect situation going on. I've got the perfect fabric and I'm super excited about it so let's get sewing. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start with our flap, which is our little handle enclosure area. Um, and we've got two pieces of that. And so on the first piece, on the back of it, we're going to put some interfacing. Now, if, um, just, well, my iron's stuck. If you are using a heavier fabric or a fleece or something thicker like that, you might not need interfacing. I'm just using um, cotton woven. And so I'm gonna put attach a little bit of interfacing to one side of this, and then to the other side, I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna grab my hoop and loop, and I'm going to, pick, one of the pieces, I'm going to, at the top, piece it. Um, my little piece is a little bit smaller. Some of it costs for longer, but I only had a little piece. So you would put it one, uh, um, one inch and three quarters away from the sides and then one and a half inches from the top. So kind of right in the middle and not middle, but like the top. <laughs> and I'm going to, well, actually I have the kind that's sticky. So I'm gonna stick it on there, but we're gonna end up sewing it on there. So we'll go over there and sew that on there. Um, but I like the sticky kind because I feel like it, I don't know, it's just easier because then I'll go over there and sew it and it'll be easy to sew it on. And then on the other, we're gonna add that strap, that webbing. Now, if you didn't wanna use webbing and you wanted to use, make your own strap, you can go ahead and do that. You can do that with your fabric. Um, if you want a one inch strap, you wanna um, cut your fabric at two and a half. If you want a half an inch, uh, quarter inch seam allowance, um, and then fold it, sew it, turn it around, top stitch it, that works just fine. I like to do that sometimes, but I found this webbing that's like the same color as my fabric. How awesome is this fabric for a picnic blanket? right and so um i figured i'd just go with it and we're gonna place that about an inch away from the top and we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and we're going to baste it on once we baste it on and we're over there already we basted that we sewed this one on we're going to put them right sides together but with the hook and loop at the bottom and the webbing at the top like so and we're gonna sew around the sides, the bottom and the top, and leaving that top area where the webbing is open to turn it around. Um, so I'm gonna go do all that on my sewing machine right now. All right, webbing up top, Velcro at the bottom, match up the raw edges. So. All right, so we're gonna open it up and, oh, actually first we're gonna grab our scissors and just trim those corners and trim any X's that you had so that your seams are not super bulky. There we go. We've got a little bit of X's right here. And you can do it this way, you can do it with um, cheering scissors, pinning scissors. Okay, we're gonna turn it now. And poke out those corners so they look nice. I don't have my tool that I usually use, so I'm just using my serger. Uh, tweezers, couldn't think of the word, tweezers. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and go right here where my straps are, my webbing, and I'm going to stitch it down to secure them on both sides. So like I'm gonna do like a little square and then an X over it, X marks the spot. How cute is this fabric? I, I'm obsessed. Let's go do that on the sewing machine. can't really see it, but there's a cute little square with the X right there, and I'm gonna do the same on the other side. 
All right, time to attach our flap. Um, I've got my blanket. I have it folded in half. This is the top of my blanket. It's folded in half. I'm gonna open it up, mark where my half is. And I'm gonna grab my flap here where my handle is. I, I had my handle clipped because it's a little bit longer and I don't want it in the way. So that's why I had it clipped close. I'm gonna place it that handle up on the top, but face down where that raw edge, right sides together. Let me find my half of my little flap. And that's gonna go right there. And we're gonna go ahead and sew it onto our blanket. Now, after we sew the flap, we can go ahead and attach our hoop, the other part of our hoop and loop. But if you want to, um, so if you printed the pattern, you will have the placement on the pattern, or you can go ahead and do 20 inches from the top, or if you wanna go ahead and make sure, because because depending on the batting size and everything, um, it might end up a little bit, the, the dimensions might end up a little bit different. So you might wanna finish everything up first and then fold it up and see exactly where you wanna sew it at. It is up to you when you wanna go ahead and place that on. I'm gonna wait till the end. Um, I did, for the purpose of the video, I made my blanket just a tiny bit smaller um, so you could see it, but um, it's the same. So I'm gonna wait till the end so I can fold it up and make sure that it's right at the spot where it needs to be. So I'm gonna go just real quick over to my sewing machine and sew that up real quick and then we'll come back to sew all the pieces together and we're almost done. Now the really fun part, and this is actually best done like on a table, on the ground, somewhere other than a really small sewing board. So I'm gonna show you real quick, but I might have to take this to my table because I don't know if I can do it on here. I did already kind of lay out my um, batting with my other fabric, my shiny pool fabric, so maybe that will make it easier. I've got my main fabric here. Oh, I'm so obsessed. And it's face up on my board and I'm gonna grab my lining fabric, look at this, it's yellow. I think this is gonna be such a cool picnic blanket. I am obsessed. So that is gonna go right, like I said, I had already kind of put them together, so hopefully that will help. I'm gonna go right sides on top. So the right sides together of the shiny fabric or your liner fabric if you're using regular fabric um, <clears throat> that's fine and then my layer of my batting right on top if you're using um, what is that called if you're using uh, the poofy stuff what is it called fleece you don't need to put the batting on it because it's already gonna be kind of plush um, but if whatever you're using you're gonna put the liner on the outer right sides together and then the fluffy stuff in the middle in between the two of them um, the reason why we use this um, pool, the shiny, laminate, whatever, waterproof you want to call it, is because, you know, you're going on a picnic, you're going to put it on the grass, um, it's going to, maybe the grass might be wet, so that will keep that moisture from coming through the blanket, and at the middle of the picnic, you got to get up because the blanket got soaked, whatever, so that is why it kind of is convenient, um, but it really is up to you however you want to make it. If you're making it, like, for, because... You know, this doesn't just have to be a picnic blanket. It can be for like a little rug. Um, you can make it with like that th thicker upholstery fabric. The things that you can do with this blanket. I'm not even joking. I'm like already having all these ideas of what I want to make. If you get some of that cool fabric, upholstery like fabric and make a cute little rug. I am actually, that's a really good idea. I'm thinking about that. That would be a good idea to put in my son's room. And then you can put as much filling as you want, like how thick you want it for easy cleanup and such things like that. So let me go ahead and keep pinning all the way around. I think this is gonna work. Like I said, I had already placed my batting on top, so that makes it a little bit easier. Um, once I'm done pinning all the way around, we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and sew the three layers together, leaving about a five, four to five inch gap where we're gonna turn it all around because we're gonna wanna turn it around. Um, 
So yeah, let me do, let me continue to do this. I might take it over to my table and lay it out and make sure it is all even before I sew it and then realize that it wasn't. So anyway. It's almost like I'm sewing a cloud. <laughs> but I wanted to sew the batting face up because of the fact that sometimes some of this fuzz can get cut underneath the plate of the sewing machine and I didn't want that to happen. I also want to guide my, my batting through because if my foot presses down on it too tight, it bunches it up and it pulls it apart. I did go with a very, um, a less expensive option. So it's, it's not as nice as some of the more expensive batting. So I have to be more careful. It's harder to work with. So I need to make sure that I can manipulate it correctly and take care of it. So it's not going to bunch up and give me a hard time later. Work your seam allowance and always make sure that you're catching all three layers. It is better for you to get a smaller size blanket because you took a little bit of more seam allowance than to figure out that you didn't go all the way to the edge because sometimes these fabrics are, they're kind of hard to get them all. See how here we've got a little bit like about a quarter inch gap between the two blankets because it got screwed over a little bit. So I'm just going to move my seam allowance down a little bit, uh, make it a bigger seam allowance so that it catches all three layers. So you want to always take that into consideration as well as you're sewing. Every once in a while, I always like to go back and make sure that my seam is catching all my fabrics so that I don't get to the end and realize, oh my, it didn't do it. Another thing too is when you're sewing this much bulk, you wanna move your sewing machine as much as you can to the middle of your workstation so you can have as much of the blanket, the bulk actually laying on your table because it's easier when you have it all on here than when it's falling down, pulling it down, trying to pull your machine down with it. As you can see on here, I had a lot of the batting left over that wasn't cut all the way, so <clears throat> that's okay. See, as I checked it, I made sure, I kept looking back and making sure that they're lined up and this part wasn't, so I can just take this little bit right here that got tilted sideways and fix it instead of being done with my whole blanket and realizing, oh my, that whole side is it's off. It didn't work right. It didn't It didn't um, stay where it was supposed to. And now I gotta redo the whole thing. So that's the good thing about taking your time. Here it is. Take your new time and doing it slowly and checking your seams every once in a while. Making sure that everything is caught like you want it to be. Because then that way you can just go back those few stitches and fix it instead of having to fix the whole side. We are basically done with this blanket. We're gonna come back over here and trim the excess. You can go all the way around trimming. Just do those corners. Make sure the corners at least are really good and trimmed um, so that they come out really nicely. Do not cut your thread though. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and go back to that, that gap that we left, the four inch gap, and turn it all the way around. So let me do all this. This would have been really cool if I would have found the green lining, which I had green lining before. I had found it and I guess, um, I well, I know I didn't have enough. And then uh, when I went to the store, they didn't have the green. So I went with the yellow, which is okay. It's still in keeping with the bright theme. It's just not as like, matchy matchy as I usually would have liked, but that's okay. This looks great. It's a bright blanket, uh, perfect for a picnic. And I am super excited about it. Now I'm just flopping out those corners real quick, poking them out. Oh, in case anybody's wondering, I know I get asked this question a lot. Where did I find this fabric? I found this fabric. I don't really have fabric stores in my area. The only fabric place I have is, sometimes Walmart has decent fabric um, in Hobby Lobby. So I found this um, picnic fabric was at Hobby Lobby and I said, perfect picnic fabric. So I have to get it. Um, okay, 
So now that we're done, we can go ahead and steam it. If we're steaming it, we wanna make sure we steam it on the, the right side, not the plastic side. Uh, so then we're gonna tuck in this seam right here, fold in that seam allowance. And what we can do, there's a couple of ways to finish up this blanket. We can top stitch all the way around, which is probably what I'll end up doing. So that way it gives it a nice, flushed, straight look. Or we can just hand stitch right here with a ladder stitch where this opening is, or just top stitch this opening closed. It is really up to you. I think I'm just gonna go out all, first I'm gonna steam it, and then I might go all the way around and just top stitch the whole thing so that it looks really nice and sharp and it doesn't like move around me as much. Honestly, eventually, if I have time, and I want to, I might do a little bit of quilting on it, just here and there, like a couple stripes or something to have it hold down, especially because I use that thicker batting that might move around on me a little bit. So I don't know, there's all kinds of options, but we are basically done. Now we just fold in and fold in, okay? And then we fold up, up, and up we bring the strap over and this is where we're gonna put that other side of the velcro I'm gonna match that up and sew it up and I will also like I said top stitch and we're done I'm just gonna put this pin on here for now I was having a hard time because it's got that hook hoop and loop right there that I didn't even think about how a fly coming to the picnic with me. How adorable. I, we can get like picnic embroidery on here. Oh my goodness, the fly's back. If you saw a video, there's another video where the fly comes around. It's back, do you see it? It's like a find world, okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, look at how cute ants going on a picnic. Isn't this the cutest thing you ever saw? I, I think this is one of my favorite sauce. It's so simple, so cute. I just love it so much. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions about anything that I did or did not do. Comment, like, share, subscribe if you haven't so you never miss any of our videos. Um, and also, so you enter for our fun fan giveaway uh, that we do monthly. Please come visit us on Facebook and Instagram so you can see what everybody else is making and you can be inspired to make beautiful things and so you can inspire us by your mix. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all next time. Bye.